Today on 5-Minute Leadership Podcast, I have Pastor Dehan Lee, who planted about two and a half years ago, he planted an Every Nation church in Culver City in Southern California. Dion, thank you for taking the time to be here. My pleasure. You went from being a pastor in a Korean congregation on the East Coast, yep. then on staff with Pastor Brett Fuller, which is a majority African-American congregation. Right. Now you've planted in Culver City in California, yeah. a church that's neither African-American nor Korean. Right. When you take disciple-making principles from the Bible, yeah. the principles are the same, but they apply one way in a Korean congregation, oh, yeah. another one in an African-American congregation, yeah. and another one where you are. Talk about that. How, how, how is this working? I'm proud to say I think my church is perhaps one of the most diverse churches in the movement. Okay. Because a lot of times you talk about diversity as white, black, but we got white, black, Asian, Hispanic, Indian. And I think about discipleship and, and the way Jesus discipled. He wasn't just like a generic human being. Like he had a very specific entree into our world, which was with a specific culture and context. And I realized for myself, if I ever wanted to plant a multi-ethnic church, I have to become multi-ethnic. Here's an axiom in church planning. You plant what you are. Yeah. You know, you, who you are, that's what you produce. And at the time when I was leading a Korean American church, I knew if I went and planted, I'd plant a Korean American church. Okay. And so my two year stop at Grace Covenant was critical. What did you learn there that empowered you and equipped you to now lead a church that is extremely diverse? What was the difference? Yeah. In order to be able to access um, and pastor people who don't look like you, don't think like you, you actually have to run deeper. Look past the surface differences and focus on the deep universal gospel needs that we have. Okay. If I live there, if I'm as authentic as possible and engage with people's hopes, dreams, their brokenness, their desire for redemption, their need for Jesus, that's a, a level that all of us can understand and reach, whether you're black, white, Asian, Latino. And so it took the intimidation factor out that I might not understand the specifics of a Hispanic culture, okay. the specifics of black culture, but I do understand gospel culture. Good. I, I do know Jesus, and we can connect there. And when I was able to step past the differences on the surface to address the deep needs, I found that I could really pastor all kinds of people. Black and a Korean is about as different as you can get. I mean, where I minister just 20 years ago, three miles down, there were the riots, the LA riots in 1992, where the media portrayed it as black on Korean crime or vice versa. And that was a painful thing in the American psyche. And it really set blacks and Koreans against each other. So for me to go into a black church and to thrive, my spiritual father is now black, my mentors are black, so my closest friends are black. That involved a lot of healing, reconciliation, but really seeing past just the skin yeah. and seeing that we need Jesus together. And if we have Jesus together, we have so much to share. I don't know of any pastor in every nation in North America who does not desire to have a more diverse church. Yeah. What would you tell those who want to see diversity, yeah. but they're not quite where they would like to be? I would begin with what I said earlier, you plant what you are. Okay. So if you wanna be diverse, start with genuine, organic, diverse friendships. If your Facebook friends look okay. one culture, you're not gonna make it. So your church is gonna look like your Facebook? Your church will look like your Facebook. Okay. And what I've noticed being at Grace, and from that point on, my Facebook completely changed because they are my genuine friends, spiritual uncles and aunts, spiritual fathers and mothers. And because I went through that organic experience of making genuine friendships and having spiritual mentors who don't look like me, it set me up to pastor all kinds of people in LA. Dion, as a Korean American, no longer living in a Korean church community, yeah. but now in a very multi-ethnic, multicultural, yeah. multinational church community, what does it cost you and yeah. your family to do this type of ministry? Yeah, it certainly it cost comfort. You think about Jesus' incarnation, that could not have been a comfortable experience for Jesus to go from heaven to earth. I think anytime you wanna cross boundaries, it requires discomfort. And for me, being at Grace Covenant in particular, that was the first time I had a black family in my house. It's the first time I had Latinos uh, and Hispanics in my living room. And I thank God for that, because unless you're willing to cross those boundaries and become very uncomfortable, and eventually become comfortable with being uncomfortable, yeah. you can't do it. You had to cross the boundaries Absolutely. before you can expect others to cross those boundaries yeah. and follow you as a Korean American leader. If you had never put yourself in uncomfortable cross-cultural situations, right. there's no way other people would cross, but since you yeah. lived it, 
yeah. and you're modeling it, you're seeing it yeah. duplicated in your church. So, yeah. Dion, thank you for taking the time here. Absolutely. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for all that you're doing in Southern California. Thank you. Appreciate that.